from New York, where the American stage begins, NBC presents Best Plays with John Chapman. Best Plays, a series of hour-length dramas based on the famous theatrical books begun by the late Burns Mantle, now edited by the distinguished drama critic of the New York Daily News, John Chapman. Mr. Chapman. Our play this evening is a comedy for grown-ups called The Philadelphia Story. It has had quite a history, and it's made some history. The late Philip Berry wrote it, and it was the biggest Broadway success of the spring of 1939. That same season, by the way, Berry wrote a beautiful failure titled Here Come the Clowns. The failure was, I think, at least as good as the hit. Our company this evening, which is ready to start the play as soon as I stop talking, not a bad idea either, is a fine one. As Tracy Lord, we have Jonah Alexander, one of radio's most distinguished young actresses, and star of the television show The Name's the Same. For the important part of Liz, we have Betty Furness, whose coverage of a recent political convention in Chicago set a record for industry and charm. In the part of Mike, the newspaper man, we have Myron McCormick. Mr. McCormick used to be a newspaper man himself once in the play State of the Union. But since April 7, 1949, he has been playing Luther Billis, a money-mad CB with a revolving stomach in South Pacific. Well, now that some of our players have been introduced, let's get the play going. The scene is the sitting room of a very nice home near Philadelphia, belonging to a family named Lord. It is late on a Friday morning in June, the day before Tracy Lord's wedding. In the sitting room of the Lord Country House on Philadelphia's main line, Tracy and her mother are arranging wedding presents while Tracy's teenage sister, Diana, is sprawled out on a sofa reading. This stinks. Don't say stinks, Diana. If absolutely necessary, smells. But only if absolutely necessary. Tracy, dear. Yes, Mother? I wish you'd look at these last-minute presents. I'm so terribly afraid some of the cards may have got mixed. As soon as I finish the thank you note to Cousin Horace, which was he? The old Dutch muffin ear, circa 1810. Muffin ear? How's this? Dear Cousin Horace, I am simply enchanted with your old Dutch muffin ear, with which my husband and I will certainly hear any muffin coming a mile away. Cousin Horace is so awful. What did he send you the other time you were married, Tracy? There was no occasion for gifts the other time. In fact, it would scarcely be considered a wedding at all. When you run off to Maryland on a sudden impulse, as Dexter and I did... Ten months is quite long to be married, though. You can have a baby in nine, can't you? I guess, if you put your mind to it. Why didn't you? Mother, don't you think it's time for her nap? You might be interested in knowing that the other time is back from wherever he's been. Whatever are you talking about, child? Tracy knows. I saw Dexter's car in front of his house. Dexter Haven home again? On the eve of your sister's wedding? Dinah, why didn't you tell her? Oh, I'm not worried, Mother. The only trouble Mr. C.K. Dexter Haven ever gave me was when he married me. You might say the same thing for Seth Lord, Mother, if you'd face it squarely as I that did. That will do. I will allow none of you to criticize your father. What are we expected to do when he treats did you? Did you hear me, Tracy? All right, I give up. And in view of this second attempt of yours, my dear, it might pay you to remind yourself that... Neither of us has proved to be a very great success as a wife. We just picked the wrong husbands, that's all. But not I. Not this time. Isn't George an angel, Mother? George is an angel. Is he handsome or is he not? George is handsome. Suds, I'm a lucky girl. I like Dexter. Why don't you ask him for lunch sometime? Maybe I will. I seem to have run out of envelopes. But there's some in the library. Shall Never I get mind. Them? I'll get them myself. She's awfully mean about Dexter, isn't she, Mother? He was rather mean to her, dear. Did he really sock her? Don't say sock, darling. Strike is quite an ugly enough word. But did he really? I'm afraid I don't know the details. Cruelty and drunkenness, it said. I know. Who's writing the papers? You read too much. You'll spoil your eyes. It was an awful thing to say about a man. I don't think they like things like that said about me. I'm sure they don't. 
Father's going to be hopping when he reads all about himself and, and that magazine, Destiny, when it comes out. Oh, well, what? About whom? This article I've been reading. It's what they call proof sheets for some article they're going to call Broadway and Finance. And Father's in it, so I just sent it on to Sandy. Sort of, you know, on approval. But the article, what does it say? Oh, it's partly about Father backing three shows for that dancer. What's her name? Tina Mara. Great heaven, what on earth can we do? Can't Father sue them for liable? But it's true. It's all... That is, I mean to say... Let me see that. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. I don't think the part about Tina Mara is true the way they put it. It's simply full of an undo. Of what? An undo. Oh, I do wish something would happen here. Nothing ever possibly in the least ever happens in Philadelphia. Oh, this is terrible. Why didn't Sandy tell me? Mother, why won't Tracy ask her own father to her own wedding? Your sister has very definite opinions about certain things. She's sort of, you know, hard, isn't she? No, dear, not hard. None of my children is that, I hope. Tracy sets exceptionally high standards for herself and... Other people aren't always quite able to live up to them. I'm going upstairs and lie down for a minute, dear. If your brother comes in, tell him to wait. I want to see you. Mother, wait. Yes, dear? Don't you think it's stinking not to at least want father at a wedding? Yes, darling. Between ourselves, I think it's good and stinking. Mr. Dexter Haven. Speaking. What? Oh, Dexter, it's you. Look at Dexter, this is Dinah Lord. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. A very great pleasure to have you back. Look at Dexter, Tracy says... Why didn't you come right over for lunch? What? Oh, you're joking. Well, honestly, I'm not. She said, why don't you ask him to lunch? Well, in that case, I'll be right over. Listen, though, maybe it would be better if you... Hello? Hello? Oh, here you are, Donna. Will you give me a hand with... Who was that on the phone? Oh, no one, Tracy. No one at all. Wrong number. Listen to this. Born into Philadelphia's horsey set, tycoon Seth Lord has abandoned the stables of the main line for a studio in Manhattan in order to further the career of his protege, dancer Tina Mora. Oh, those devils, those absolute devils. Who's the devil? Say, what's going on here? Why the long faces? It's this awful article they're going to publish in that magazine. What are we to do, Sam? Now, Mother, just relax. I think I fix things. Destiny is published by a man named Sidney Kidd. He also publishes Dime, also Spy, a picture magazine. I worked on Dime for two summers, you know that. Well, he's got to be stopped, Sandy. I'll go to him myself. That won't be necessary. I just hope your father never hears of it. I had a copy made and sent it around to his flat while I was in New York with a little note saying, how do you like it? Sandy. Well, why not? Let him worry a little. Let him worry a lot. Excuse me, Mr. Alexander. Oh, yes, Thomas. Uh, Mr. Connor and the young lady say they will be down directly, sir. Oh, thanks. That's fine. Uh, tell May or Elsie to look after Miss Embry, will you? Very good, sir. What's all this? Mr. Connor and... Uh, Mike Connor, Macaulay Connor, his name is, and uh, Elizabeth Embry. I brought them down for the wedding. You asked people to my wedding and to stay in this house without even asking us. Now, wait a minute, Tracy. I had a reason. Connor and Miss Embry have been down here for two months riding up our town. The Philadelphia story. The Philadelphia story? Mm Mm-hmm. It's to come out in three installments. Industrial Philadelphia, historical Philadelphia, and finally... I think I'm going to be sick. Yes, dear. Fashionable Philadelphia. I am sick. But why us? Surely there are other families who... Yes, why not the Drexels or the Biddles or... We go even further back. It's those Quakers. And, of course, there's your former marriage, Tracy. Oh, a trade, eh? So we're to let them publish the inside story of my wedding in order to keep Father's wretched little affair quiet. That's it. What's this writer's name again? Connor, Macaulay Connor. Miss Embry's a photographer. (gasps) Oh, dear. What? Will it seem strange to them, I wonder? 
Your father not being here for his own daughter's wedding? Oh, that's all right. I fixed that, too. You've been very busy, haven't you? I sent a fake telegram to be delivered before dinner. Confined to bed with cold, unable to attend nuptials, oceans of love, father. Not in just those words, Sandy. <laughs> well, not exactly. It'll come on the telephone, and Thomas will take it, and Mother won't have her glasses, and he'll have to read it aloud. Not good enough. Any better suggestions? No, but I'll think of something. You better think fast. I intend to. If they have to have a story, I'll give them a story. One they can't get through the mails. This is where he said they'd be. Well, he said the sitting room. I suppose that's contrasted to the living room, the ballroom, the drawing room, the morning room. Good morning, yeah. Connor. Good morning, Miss Embry. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, that's all right. Quite a place, the Lord House. Do you mind if I say something to you, Connor? Not at all. Your approach to this assignment seems definitely antagonistic. I have to tell you in all honesty that I'm opposed to everything you represent. Destiny is not exactly a radical publication. What are you doing, boring from within? I'm not a communist by a long shot. Just a small pin feather on the left wing. Jeffersonian Democrat? That's more like it. Have you ever seen Jefferson's house of Monticello? That's quite a place, too. Home team one, visitors nothing. Uh, tell me, is this a very old house, Mr. Lord? No, no, there are very few old houses on the main line. The gatehouse is, of course... Father's grandfather built that for a summer place when they all lived in Rittenhouse Square. The gatehouse. Uh, that's where the prospective bridegroom stay. Mm-hmm. He'll be here for lunch. You'll meet him there. The research department didn't give us much data on him. Let's see. George Kittredge, age 32. Since last year, general manager Quaker State Coal in charge of operation. Is that right? That's right. And brilliant at it. How did your sister happen to meet him? Well, she and I went up to Wilkes-Barre a few months ago to look things over. I see. And was it instant? Immediate. He must be quite a guy, this Mr. Kittredge. And your sister, which side of this fine aboriginal family does she resemble most, would you say? There's some family histories in the library. I'll get them for you. And also, I'll see if I can round up some of the living members. Oh, Mr. Lord. Yes? The rest of the family don't know about us, do they? Pleasant or not, don't you think? Much. Yes, that's what I thought. Also, what your employer, Mr. Kidd, thought. I don't get you, Lord. What? Why don't you throw us out? Connor, I hope you'll never know. So much for historical Philadelphia, so much for industrial. Now, gentle reader, consider an entire section of American society which closely following the English tradition, lives on the land, but in a new sense. It is not the land that provides the living, it is... Uh... Quiet, Mike. What? One of the lords is coming across the terrace. Oh, Lady Lord, is it... Uh... No, no, it's the kid's sister, I think. Oh, how do you do? Friends of my brother Alexander, are you not? Uh, Sandy, as we call him. How do you do? You're Miss Dinah Lord? My real name is Diana, but my sister changed it. I'm Elizabeth Imbry, and this is Macaulay Connor. It's awfully nice and... Enchanté de vous voir, mademoiselle. Enchanté de faire votre connaissance, monsieur. Uh, enchanté. I spoke French before I spoke English. My early childhood was spent in Paris when my father worked in a bank, the house of Morgan. Really? C'est vrai, absolument. Can you play the piano? Why, no. I can. Shall I play for you? Uh, do, please. I'm a little out of practice. Uh, I'm sure you play beautifully. Mike, what is this? An idiot, probably. They happen in the best of families, especially the best. The Bahamas, how well I remember them. Those perfume nights, the flowers, the native wines. I was there once on a little trip with Leopold Stokowski. You were there once with your governess after the hooping call. May I present my sister Tracy, Mr. Connor and Miss Embry. Mother wants to see you at once, Donna. At once, do you hear me? You've got on my hair ribbon. Your face is still dirty. Out with you. This is a long-awaited pleasure, Miss Lloyd. It's awfully nice having you here. I do hope you'll stay for my wedding. We'd like to very much. In fact, it was our idea. I'm so pleased it occurred to you. <laughs> I hope your rooms are comfortable. Oh, very. Thanks. 
What a cunning little camera, Miss Embry. Is photography your hobby? I'm afraid I'm rather a nuisance about it. Oh, you couldn't be. People have always been so kind about letting us live our simple and un... Event for lives here unmolested. Of course, after my divorce last year, but I expect that always happens. Still, it did seem that some of the reporters' methods were a trifle underhanded. <clears throat> You're a writer, aren't you, Mr. Connor? In a manner of speaking. Yes, Sandy told me. I've sent for your books. Macaulay, Connor. What's the Macaulay for? My father taught English history. I'm Mike to my friend. Of whom you have many, I'm sure. Where did your father teach? In the high school in South Bend, Indiana. South Bend? Oh, it sounds like dancing, doesn't it? You must have had a most happy childhood there. It was terrific. I'm so glad. I don't mean it that way. I'm so sorry. Why? Largely due to the lack of wherewithal, I guess. Oh, but that doesn't always cause unhappiness, does it? Not if you're the right kind of man. George Kittredge, my fiancé, never had anything either, but he... Are either of you married? No. Not at present. And are you from South Bend, too, Miss Embry? Duluth. Duluth. That must be a lovely spot. West of here, isn't it? Uh, sort of. And this is your first visit to Philadelphia? Just about. Mm, quaint old place, don't you think? Odd customs and such. Where the Scrapples eat biddle on Sunday. Of course, it is very old. Philadelphia, I mean. The Scrapple is fresh every week. How old are you, Mr. Connor? I was 30 last month. Oh, two books isn't much for a man of 30. I don't mean to criticize, but you probably have other interests besides your work. None, unless you mean... Oh, uh, how sweet. Are you and Miss Embry, uh, uh... That's an odd question, I must say. Why? Well, it, it just is. Well, I don't see why. I think it's very interesting. Miss Embry, don't you agree that all this marrying and giving in marriage is the darndest jip that's ever been put over on an unsuspecting public? Will she be human? Please, Mr. Connor, I asked Miss Embry a question. The answer is no. I do not. Good. Nor do I. That's why I'm putting my chin out for the second time tomorrow. Ah, oh, here's the lucky man now. I'll bring him right in and put him on view. In here, George. Right in here, Doc. Oh, darling. Good on. grief. Who's doing the interviewing here? She's a lot more than I counted on. You suppose she caught on somehow? Ah, she's just a head in. I'm beginning to feel about the size of a pinhead. Now, don't let her throw you, Liz. Do you want to take over? What I really want? I want to go home. <laughs> Mr. Kittredge, didn't I read a piece about you in the New Nation a while ago? Quite a while ago. I've been resting on my laurels since that, and a couple of others. Quite a neat piece of work. Uh, anticipating that last coal strike the way you did. Oh, anyone should have foreseen that. I was just lucky. Note of becoming modesty. You should see him with the men. They simply adore him. Oh, come on, Tracy. Never in my life will I forget that first night I saw him. All those wonderful faces and the torchlights and the way his voice just boomed. I guess this must be love. Your guess is correct, Miss Embry. I'm just his faithful old dog, Trey. <sighs> Give me your paw. Oh, you've got it, darling. Holy cats. What's the matter, Sandy? Mr. Dexter Haven. Dexter. Hello, friends and enemies. I came the short way across the field. Well, this is a surprise, Dexter. I should think it is. Now, George, don't be bitter. Hello, Tracy. And how is my favorite ex-mother-in-law? I think you'd better go right home at once, Dexter. But I've been invited. Awfully sweet of you to ask me to lunch, Trey. No, not at all. Tom is an extra place for Mr. Haven. Yes, Miss Tracy. Miss Embry, Mr. Connor. My former husband. Well, how do you do? How do you do? How do you? Hey, let me look at you, George. Uh, you don't look as well as when I last saw you. Poor fellow, I know just how you feel. But redhead here, isn't she in the pink, though? Really, Dexter? I mean it. You don't look old enough to marry anyone, Trey. Not even for the first time. You never did. She needs trouble to mature a kittredge. Give her lots of it. I'm afraid she can't count on me for that. No? Too bad. Sometimes, for your own sake, I think you should have stuck to me, Red. I thought it was for life, but the nice judge gave me a full part. That's the kind of talk I like to hear. No bitterness, no recrimination. Just a good, quick left to the jaw. Very funny. <laughs> it's clouding up again. I do hope it won't rain. Please don't let it rain on our wedding day, George. It won't. I'll see to it personally. Dear George, I almost believe you could. <laughs> Joanna, who's definitely crazy. Who? Hmm? Uh, who told you, Liz? Dinah. 
Well, Dinah should know. Hey, where is she now? I'd like to get some more shots of her while it's still light. She's out schooling a horse somewhere. It's the horses that get the schooling in these parts. What do you think of Mr. Kittredge? Who? Hmm? Oh, uh, well, he's in a tough spot with her first husband prowling, Bob. He's a sinister fellow, that Dexter Haven. Liz, answer me honestly. Liz, what right has a girl like Tracy Lord to exist? I mean, what place has she got in the world today? You're a funny one, Mike. Oh, she's a new one on me. Maybe Philadelphia produces a different brand of monkey. Mike. Yeah? This is Liz you're talking to. Don't try to make a monkey out of me. I don't get you. You may hate what she stands for, but you don't hate what she does to you, Mike. You mean that I... Oh, no, no, Liz, you're wrong. Well, you couldn't be wrong there. She doesn't attract me in the least. Uh Uh-huh. Would I change places for her, for all her wealth and beauty? Just ask me. Uh Uh-oh. There's Tracy now coming up from the stables. I'll see you later, Mike. Uh, Okay, Liz. Uh, Let's see. May I bother you for a minute, Mr. Connor? Oh? Oh, oh, yes, you may indeed. Something the matter? Well, I've been reading these stories of yours. They're so darn beautiful, I had to tell you. Thanks. Why, Connor, they're almost poetry. Don't fool yourself, they are. I can't make you out at all. You talk so big and tough, and then you write like this, which is which. I guess I'm both. No. I think you put on the toughness to save your skin. You think? Yes, I know a little about that. Do you? Yes, quite a lot. The book was just such a complete surprise, that's all. Yes, it seems you do. What? Know about it. The story called With the Rich and Mighty, I think I like that the best. I got that from a Spanish peasant. Will you? When you can write like this, how can you possibly do anything else? Well, you'll never believe it, but there are people in this world who have to earn their living. Well, people buy books, don't they? That one represents two solid years' work. It netted Connor something under $600. But that shouldn't be. Only unhappily it is. And what about your Miss Embry? She's a born painter and might be an important one. What Miss Embry must eat. Also, she prefers a roof over her head to being constantly out in the rain and snow. Food and... I'm sorry to have seemed patronizing. Oh, no, but I Please don't mean... bother, really. Good... Produced applications, but the trouble has just begun, as we'll see now. Just what it is you're hanging around for. In a moment. Oh, hello there, Connor. Oh, hello, Mr. Haven. Oh, uh... She's a goddess without patience for any kind of human imperfection. And when I gradually discovered that my relation to her was expected to be not that of a loving husband and companion, but, uh... Oh, never mind. Say it. But that of a kind of high priest to a virgin goddess, then my drinks grew more frequent and deeper in hue, that's all. I never considered you as that or myself. You did without knowing it. And the night that you got drunk on champagne and climbed out on the roof and stood there naked with your Uh, arms uh... out to the moon wailing... Dexter, what are you trying to make me out as? Tracy, what do you fancy yourself as? I don't know that I fancy myself as anything. When I read you were going to marry Kittredge, I couldn't believe it. How could you even think of it? I love him, that's why, as I never even began to love you. I suppose when you come right down to it, it just offends my vanity to have anyone who was ever remotely my wife remarry so obviously beneath her. Beneath me? How dare you, any of you in this day and age, use any such... I'm talking about difference in mind and imagination. And what's wrong with George? Nothing. He's just not for you. He is for me. He's a great man and a good man. And he's of of, of national importance. Oh, Oh, good Lord, you sound like an article in Destiny. Well, whatever it is, you'll have to stick this time. He'll give you no out as I did. I won't require one. But let me tell you this, Red. You'll never be a first-class woman or a first-class human being till you've learned to have some regard for human frailty. It's a pity your own foot can't slip a little sometimes. But no, the goddess must and shall remain intact. I think... You know, I think there are more of you around than people realize. You're a special class of American female now, the married maidens. 
And of the type Philadelphia answers, you're the absolute tops, my dear. Blast your soul, Dex, if you say one more word. For the moment, I've said my say. Well, well, well. I suppose I ought to object to this, Tusum. That would be most objectionable, George. Well, any time either of you want more advice from me... When we do, we'll give you a ring. Eddie. I left your wedding present there on the table, Red. Sorry I hadn't any ribbon to tie it up with. You see, it's no use even attempting to be friendly. Certainly not. You were a dear to try. Please don't mind him, George. Well, my last wedding present, I may as well open it. I wonder what it is. With Dexter, it's anybody's guess. What? Why, it's a photograph. Yes, it's the true love. What's that? It's a boat he designed and built, practically. We sailed her up the coast of Maine and back the summer we were married. My, she was yaw. Yaw? What does that mean? It means... Oh, what does it mean? It means easy to handle, quick to the helm, fast, bright, everything a boat should be. And so what? Rather bad taste, I'd say, giving you that. Ne- Dexter never concerns himself much with taste. How'd you ever happen to marry a fellow like that, Tracy? Oh, I don't know. We grew up together. George, you don't really mind him, do you? I mean... I mean, the fact of him... I don't see what you mean, Trey. Well, I mean the fact that... You know that he was my lord and master. I don't believe anyone ever was or ever will be. You know, that's the wonderful thing about you, Trey. What? But, uh... You're like some marvelous, distant... old queen, I guess. You're, you're so cool and fine and always so much your own. That's the wonderful you and you that no one can ever really possess. That no one can touch hardly. It's... It's a kind of beautiful purity, Tracy. Yes, that's the only word for it. George, It's uh, what I first worshipped you for, Tracy. George, From listen. afar. Only from a little nearer now, eh, darling? But I don't want to be worshipped. I want to be loved. I mean, really loved. But that goes without saying, Tracy. Oh, but now it's you who don't see what I mean. Excuse me, Miss Tracy. Shall I put this picture with the other presents? No, Thomas. Just leave it there, please. Yes, Miss. Don't let Miss Imbry or Connor get hold of it. Certainly not. Hope they'll soft pedal that first marriage. Anyway. I wish they'd pedal themselves right out of here. Oh, they've got a job to do. And it's an honor, you know. What? Why, to be written up by destiny. Are you joking? Joking? You can't seriously mean that I you... think destiny fills a very definite place, Tracy. George, Tracy, you aren't dressed. Dressed, Mother? Party tonight. You're the guest of honor, Tracy. Now, go along, George. Hurry. Right on my way, ma'am. Wait for me, Tracy. Does, uh, does that young man by any chance ever walk anywhere? When he likes, I expect. I have a feeling he's going to take the ring tomorrow and go through center with it. <laughs> Seth, you idiot. That's very amusing, I'm sure. What worries me at the moment is the spectacle we're all making of ourselves for the benefit of that young man and woman from destiny. And whose fault is it, inasmuch as you let us in for it in the first place? Do keep that note out of your voice, Tracy. It's most unattractive. Oh? And how does your Miss Mara talk? Or does she purr? Tracy. You've got a fine right you have after the way you've treated Mother, after the way you've treated all of us, to come back here in your best country manner and strike attitudes and make stands and criticize my fiancé and and give orders and mess things up generally just as Stop if you... Did. I can't help it. It's sickening, as if he'd done nothing at all. It's no concern of yours, Tracy. If it concerns anyone, it concerns... Well, actually, I, I don't know whom it concerns except your father. That's very wise of you, Margaret. Tracy, how can I make you understand? It's a... It's a reluctance to grow old, I think. I suppose the best mainstay a man can have as he gets along in years is a daughter. The right kind of daughter. That's interesting, to say the least. One who loves him blindly, as no good wife ever should, of course. One for whom he can do no wrong. How sweet. A girl of his own, full of warmth for him, full of foolish, uncritical affection. None of which I've got. You have everything it takes to make a lovely woman, Tracy... Except one essential, an understanding heart. Without it, you might just as well be made of bronze. That's an awful thing to say to anyone. Indeed it is. So I'm to blame for Tina Mara, am I? If any blame attaches to some extent, I expect you are. You coward. No, but better to be one than a prig and a perennial spinster, however many marriages. Yes, that's too much. I'm afraid it's not enough. I'm afraid that... Nothing is, Margaret. Seth, 
I understand a great deal now that I didn't. It's all past now. It has been for some time. Forgive me, Margaret, you won't have to again. I understand a lot more than I did as well. A prig. And a... You mean... You mean you think I'm some kind of virgin goddess or something? If your ego wishes to call it that, yes. Also, you've been talking like a jealous woman. Oh, stop it. Stop it. What's the matter with everyone all at once, anyhow? Miss Embry, will you have a cocktail or champagne? Champagne, thanks. I've never had enough. You will tonight. Champagne flu. Excuse me, Mr. Lord. Uh, yes, Thomas. They've just phoned a telegram, Mr. Lord. Uh, well, let's have it. It's for Mrs. Lord, sir. Read it, Thomas. I haven't my glasses. Uh, most frightfully sorry, will not be able to get down for the wedding as I'm confined to my bed with everything wrong. Uh, baby, better. It was only gas. Love, Father. <laughs> Is there any answer, madam? No, Thomas. None in this world. <laughs> Easy there, Chelsea. Oh, it was a lovely party, wasn't it, Sandy? Let's you and I have a nightcap. You are already in wine, sister. You lie. Champagne never affects me in the slightest. That's because you never take it. Even if I did, it wouldn't. Oh. Let's sit here on the terrace for a while. Okay, but get thee to bed, Tracy. It's late. George will spank. And I could spank George for the way he behaved. Oh, well, he had a right to be sore. You and Mike Connor were gone for two hours at least. Well, you were along. All the same, tongues were wagging like tails. George said... I wonder where Dexter was. He wasn't invited, was he? Well, I half expected him to come. I don't like the look behind Dexter's eyes, Sandy. It makes me sad. Don't be sad, Tracy. Tracy! Here comes Mike. Mike, pour me some champagne. I've been carrying this all over the garden looking for you. <laughs> Here. Mm. Now, I tell you what. Let's all have a quick swim to brighten this up. Go get Liz, Sandy. Not me. Too cold this early. It's the best hour of the day. Dexter and I always swam after parties. Let's dip into this bottle instead. Go get Liz anyway, Sandy. All right. Anyway, if she's not in bed. Did you enjoy the party, Mike? The prettiest sight in this fine, pretty world is the privileged class enjoying its privileges. <laughs> Consider, gentle reader, they toil not, neither do they spin. Oh, yes, they do. They spin in circles. Tracy, you can't marry that guy. You just don't seem to match up. Then the fault's with me. Maybe so. All the same, you can't do it. No, come around about noon tomorrow. I mean today. There's magnificence in you, Tracy. I'm telling you, you can't. Now I'm getting self-conscious again. It's funny, isn't it? Mike, let's... What? I don't know. Let's go in, I guess. It's late. The magnificence that comes out of your eyes. That's in your voice and the way you stand there, the way you walk. You're lit from within, bright, bright, bright. There are fires back down in you, hearth fires and holocausts. That I don't seem to you uh, made of bronze or... You're made of flesh and blood. That's the unholy surprise of it. You're the golden girl, Tracy, full of love and warmth and delight. Hey, what's this? You've got tears in your eyes. Shut up, shut up. Oh, my, keep talking. Keep talking. I've stopped. Why, has your mind taken hold again, Professor? A good thing, don't you agree? No, Professor. Drop the Professor. Yes, Professor. That's really all I am to you, is it? Of course, Professor. Are you sure? Why, why, yes, it... Yes, of course, Professor. Mike. Mike, no, please. Oh. Golly, Moses. Oh, Tracy, dear. Oh, Mike. Let me tell you something. No, don't. All of a sudden, I've got the shakes. Yeah, me too. What is it? It must be something like love. Oh, no, no, it mustn't be. It can't. Why would it be inconvenient? Terribly. I'm getting married tomorrow to George. Oh, Mike, I'm a bad girl. Not you. We're out of our minds. Right into our hearts. That ought to have music. It has, hasn't it? 
Tracy, you Mike, love please, me. someone's coming. Nuts. Mike, it isn't part of the pool. It's only over the lawn in the Birch Grove. It's, a, it's lovely there now in the early dawn. All right, come on. I, I can't. It's as if my insteps were melting away. Have I got feet of clay or something? Quick, they'll be here in a moment. I'll carry you. Oh, Mike. Oh, Mike, I feel so small all at once. You're immense. You're tremendous. Not me. Oh, not me. I thought you said they were out on the terrace. They were. They must have gone for a walk or something. Or something. Liz, you're in love with Connor, aren't you? People ask the oddest questions. Why don't you marry Hello, him? anybody home? Sounds like we have callers. You didn't answer my question. I didn't hear Hello, you. Hello, Sandy. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Dexter. You're an early one. I saw quite a full day ahead and got myself up. Was it a good party? Fine. Lovely. Good. And sufficient. I'm going to bed. Liz. Yes, Sandy? Why don't you, uh... You know what I asked. Mike? He's still got a lot to learn, and I don't want to get in his way for a while. Okay? Risky, though. Suppose another girl came along in the meantime. I'd scratch her eyes out, I guess. Uh, unless she was going to marry someone else the next day. Good night, all. Where are they? They called it a night. At least I hope and pray they did. Well, well. Make yourself comfortable, Dex. I've got a little errand to run. Well, well, well. Hi there, George. What are you doing here, Haven? Oh, I'm a friend of the family. Just dropped in for a chat. Don't try to be funny. I asked you a question. I might have asked you the same one. I telephoned Tracy, but the phone in her room didn't answer. I didn't telephone, so I came right over. I was worried. I oh. was worried, too. About what? What do you think of this Connor, or do you? What about him? I just wondered. Listen, if you're trying to insinuate... My dear fellow, I wouldn't dream of it. I was only trying... <laughs> Who's that I hear? Is someone in the pool? Uh, George, you're tired. I strongly advise you to go to bed. Oh, you do, do you? Yes, I strongly urge you to do so at once. I'm staying right here. You're making a mistake. I'm staying right here, and so are you. All right, then. Take the works, and may God be with you. Mike, not so bad. You're That's Tracy's voice. Who's that with... Look, Mike, we have callers. Hi, George. Hi, Dex. It's Connor. He's carrying her in his arms. I always knew he was a gentleman. George, Dexter, you should have been with Paul... Connor, put her down. Don't you do it, Mike. You carry me right upstairs. You bet I will, God. I warn you, Easy, Connor. Easy, George. She's not hurt, is she, Mike? Not wounded, sire, but dead. That beach roll. Mm -hmm. She went in swimming without... Without a stitch. It's delicious. Don't pay her any mind. It seems the minute she hit the water, the champagne. A likely story, Connor. What did you say? I said a likely story. Well, Listen, if you think... take me upstairs, Mike. Sure. Uh, Connor. Yeah? You'll come down again directly? If you want. I want. Night, Dexter. Night, George. Second door on the right at the top of the stairs, Connor. Mind you don't wake Dinah. My feet are made of clay. Made of clay. Good Lord. You believe it, then? Believe what? The implications of what you've just seen, let's say. What else is there to believe? Well, I suppose that's entirely up to you. I've got eyes, and I've got imagination, haven't I? I don't know. Have you? So you pretend not to believe it? Yes, I pretend not to. Then you don't know women? Possibly not. You're a blind fool? Quite possibly. We're all only human, you know. You, all of you, and your, your rotten, sophisticated ideas. Isn't it the limit, though? Well, she's all tucked in. I want to talk to you, Connor. I'll take care of him, Kittredge. You? What right have you... The lady is still Mrs. Dexter Haven till tomorrow, Kittredge. And this, Connor, is for taking advantage of my wife. Oh. Uh, look here, Haven. If you think by this gesture, you can make me forget what you Tracy have to done. make up your own mind about that, Kittredge. I'll make up my mind, all right. Good night. Uh, uh, sorry, Connor. Let me help you up. Uh, thanks, old man. Okay? Yes. But if you I think... know, but I thought I'd better hit you before George did. What's all around here? Nothing, Sandy. Just as quiet as a church. Who got hit? Connor. Oh, too bad. I thought it might be Kittredge. Well, old man, we can't have everything. Or can we? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Isn't it a fine day, though? Is everyone fine? That's fine. Oh, my, I'm hearty. Poor Tracy. How are you otherwise? Hmm? 
Oh, it's you, Dexter. My eyes don't seem to open properly. Go home, Dex, will you? It's my wedding day. Not till we get those eyes open. You know what time it is? It's nearly half past twelve. Oh, darn it, can't be. Where's Mother? Well, she's talking with the orchestra and Father with the minister. Minister already? And Miss Embry's gone with the camera to shoot horses and Sandy's in his room. And Mr. Connor, he hasn't come down yet. And it's Saturday. Thanks, Lode. It's nice to have things accounted for. Only I wonder what this could be. It looks terribly like a wristwatch. But whose? I found it in my room. I nearly stepped on it. Getting out of bed? Yes, why? I just wondered. There's another mystery, too. Mysteries intrigue me. I was robbed last night. My bracelet and my engagement ring are missing everywhere. Are these the ones? Why, yes. But you weren't at the party, Dexter. Are you quite sure? Were you? Oh, don't tell me you don't remember. I... I do now, sort of. But there were such a lot of people. You should have taken a quick swim to shake them off. There's nothing like a swim after a late night. A swim. A swim? Now your eyes are open. That was my dream. <sighs> what, dear? That was just the beginning. The swim, I mean. If you don't mind, I think I'll stroll into the pantry at this point. You know, speaking of eye-openers. Uh, Dinah. What? If conversation lags, you might tell Tracy the rest of your dream. I did have the funniest dream about you last night, Trey. <laughs> what was it, dear? I thought I got up and went over to the window and looked out across the lawn. And guess what I saw coming out of the woods? A skunk. Well, sort of. Mr. Connor. Mr. Connor? Yes. With his both arms full of something. And guess what it turned out to be? What? You. And some clothes. Oh, no. Well, isn't it funny? It was sort of like as if you were coming from the pool. The pool. <laughs> I'm going crazy. I'm standing here solidly on my own two arms and going crazy. And then what? Then I thought I heard something outside in the hall. And I went and I opened my door a crack, and, and there he was, still coming along with you in his arms, puffing like a steam engine. His wind can't be very good. And then what? You were sort of... I never crooned in my life. And then, Mr. Connor... Guess what? I couldn't. Possibly. He just sailed right into your room with you, and that scared me, so I, I just flew back to my room, or I thought I did, and I pulled the covers up over my head. And I laid there thinking, if, if that's the way it is, why doesn't she marry him instead of old George? Dinah, you told Dexter your dream. All of it? Not a word, Tracy. Not a single word. But you know how quick he is. Dinah, Lord, you little fiend, how can you stand... Here comes Father. Oh, uh, Tracy, the next time you marry, choose a different minister, will you? This one wears me out. Dinah, aren't you dressed yet? I'm going, Father. It only takes me a minute. Father? Yes, Tracy? I'm glad you came back. I'm glad you're here. Thank you, child. I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry that I'm a disappointment to you. I never said that, daughter. And I never will. Good morning, Tracy. Good morning, Mr. Lloyd. Good morning, Mr. Connor. If you'll excuse me, I have to find your mother, Tracy. I wonder what can be detained George. <laughs> How's your article coming? Are you doing us up to a turn? Well, I don't know. I've got so darn tolerant all at once. I doubt if I'll ever be able to write another line. <laughs> You are a fella, Mike. Or the mug of this world, I don't know. What's the matter with your chin? Does it show? A little. What happened? I guess I just stuck it out too far. Are you all right, Tracy? Me? Why, of course. Why shouldn't I be? That was a flock of champagne we put away last Why, night. I never felt better in my life. I had a simply wonderful evening. I hope you enjoyed it, too. I enjoyed the last part of it. Really? Why? I mean, why, especially the last? Are you asking me, Tracy? Oh, <laughs> you mean the swim. We did swim, and... and... and so forth, didn't we, Mike? We swam and so forth. Mike, uh... Oh, Tracy, you darling, darling... Oh, darling. Mike... Oh, what can I say to you, uh, Not anything, and especially not, darling. I'll never in this world forget Oh, you. no, please. Oh. You're going through with the wedding, then? Why, why, why shouldn't I? All right, no dice. 
But understand, also no regrets about last night. Regrets? Well, why do you say that? That's it. That's the stuff. You're wonderful. You're aces, Tracy. I'm serious, Mike. I'm asking you. Tell me straight out. Tell me the reason why I should have any... Re- no, don't. Just tell me. What time is it? Oh. Uh, my wristwatch. Oh. Did it get broken? No, oh, it's gone. I've lost it somewhere. Oh, I can't tell you how extremely sorry I am to hear that. Yes, Thomas, what is it? Uh, this note was sent over this morning at 10 o'clock, Miss Tracy, but Mrs. Lord asked us not to disturb Thank you. you, Thomas. It's from George. Kittredge? Yes. And listen to this. My dear Tracy, your conduct last night was so shocking to my ideals of womanhood, huh, that my attitude toward you and the prospect of a happy and useful life together has changed materially. Tracy! Well, George, come on in. Tracy, you're not going to read that aloud in front of him. It's only a letter from a friend. We're all friends here, aren't we, Mike? To continue, your totally unexpected breach of common decency certainly entitles me to a full explanation before going through with our proposed marriage. Otherwise, with profound regrets and all best wishes, yours very sincerely. Well? Yes, George, I quite agree with you. And thank you so very much for your good wishes at this time. Is that all you've got to say? I wish I had an explanation. Unfortunately, I haven't any. You'd better just say good riddance, George. Well, it isn't easy. I don't see why. You admit I had a right to be angry. Oh, absolutely. On the very eve of your wedding, another man. That's about enough, Kettridge. You keep out of this. I am out of it. You see, Kettridge... It just might interest you to know that last night consisted of exactly two kisses and one rather late swim. Thank you, Mike, but there's really no need. All of which I thoroughly enjoyed and the memory of which I wouldn't part with for anything. It's no use, Mike. After which I accompanied her to her room, deposited her on her bed, and promptly returned to you two on the porch, as Dexter will doubtless remember. Doubtless, without a doubt. Dexter! Golly, why didn't someone sell tickets? You have an evil mind, George. You mean to say that was all there was to it? We do. But why? Why? Was I so unattractive? So distant? So forbidding? This is fine talk, too. I'm asking a question. You were extremely attractive. And as for distant and forbidding, on the contrary. But you were also somewhat the worse or better for wine. And there are rules about that, unfortunately. Thank you, Mike. I think men are wonderful. Aren't they, though, the little dears? Oh, come in and join the fun. Well, that's a relief. Why, George? It's no thanks to me. It's purely by courtesy of the gentleman from South Bend. Local papers, please copy. I fail to see the humor in this situation, Miss Embry. I appreciate that. It was a little hard for me, too, at first. Oh, Liz, I... It's all right, Tracy. We all go a little haywire at times, and if we don't, maybe we ought to. You see, Mr. Kittredge, it wasn't Tracy at all. It was another girl. You mean she'd had too much to drink? Well, I'm not a prohibitionist, but a man expects his wife to... To behave herself naturally. To behave herself naturally, bravo. Dexter, please. Uh, I'm sorry. The point is, George, that nothing seems to have happened at all. What made you think it had? It seems you didn't think any too well of yourself. That's the odd thing, George. Somehow I'd have hoped that you would have thought better of me than I did. Well, I'm not going to quibble, Tracy, but all the evidence was there. And I was guilty straight off. That is, until I was proven innocent. Well, downright un-American, if you ask me. No one is asking you, Haven. Now, uh, come on, Tracy, it's, it's late. Let's let bygones be bygones. What do you say? Yes. And goodbye, George. Goodbye. I don't understand you. You're too good for me, George. You're a hundred times too good. I never said that. And I'd make you most unhappy. Most. That is, I'd do my best to. Well, if that's the way you want it. That's the way it is. All right. Possibly it's just as well. I thought you'd eventually think so. Haven, I've got a feeling you've had more to do with this than anyone. A novel and interesting idea, I'm sure. You and your whole rotten class. You're all on your way out. A lot of you ain't good riddance. Goodbye, George. Goodbye. Well, there goes George. Oh, dear, the music is starting and the wedding is off. What in the name of all the tolly am I going to do? Tracy. Yes, Mike. That minister has never seen Kittredge, has he? Why, no. And most of the guests don't know him. What are you driving? You can forget about the license for now. Oh, now, Mike. I got you into this and I'll get you out. Will you marry me, Tracy? No, Mike. Thanks. But no. Why not? Because I don't think Liz would like it. I'm not awfully sure that you would, and I'm even a little doubtful about myself. But I'm beholden to you, Mike. 
I'm most beholden to you. All those people in there, they're waiting. Mike, don't get too conventional all at once, will you? There'll be a reaction. Liz! Oh, don't go. Wait a minute. Liz, wait a minute. And there goes Mike. But it'll be all right, Tracy. You've been got out of jams before. Tracy. Tracy, my dear. Yes. Your father and I just saw George in the hall. I'm sorry, Mother. It's all right, dear. Your father will make a very simple announcement. Is there anything special you want me to say? No, Father, I'll say it, whatever it is. I won't be got out of anything more, thanks. Tracy, what are you going to do? Hi, I'm... I'm... Uh, hello. Uh, good, good morning. Uh, I'm terribly sorry to have kept you waiting, but there's been a little hitch in the proceedings. I've made a terrible fool of myself, which isn't unusual, and my fiancé is... My fiancé... Need any help? Go away, Dexter, will you? My fiancé that was, that is, he thinks we'd better call it a day, and I quite agree with him. Uh, Dexter, what the blaze is next? Two years ago, you were invited to a wedding in this house. Two years ago, you were invited to a wedding in this house. And I did you out of it by eloping to Maryland. And I did you out of it by eloping to Maryland. Which was very bad manners. Which was very bad manners. But I hope to make it up to you now by going through with it as originally planned. But I hope to make it up to you now by going... By going beautifully through with it now, as originally and and most beautifully planned. Because there's something awfully nice about a wedding. I don't know, they're gay and attractive, and I've always wanted one. So if you'll just keep your seats a minute. So if you'll just keep your seats a minute. That's all. That, that's all. Oh, darling, are you sure? Not in the least, but I'll risk it. Will you? You bet. And you didn't do it just to soften the blow. No, Trace. Nor to save my face. It's a nice little face. Oh, I'll be your now. I promise to be your. Be whatever you like. You're my redhead. Daughter. I love you, Father. Never in my life have I been so full of love before. How do I look? Like a queen. Like a goddess. Do you know how I feel? How? Like a human being. And is that all right? All right. Oh, Father. It's heaven. You have just heard the best plays production of The Philadelphia Story by Philip Berry. Starring Myron McCormick, Joan Alexander, and Betty Furness. Here again is your host, drama critic John Chapman. That was a good comedy, I think. I hope you do, too. And a good performance. I've been sitting here watching and listening to these people, Mr. McCormick, Miss Alexander, and Miss Furness, and all of the others, and I've enjoyed it very much. It's a smart play, the kind of play Philip Berry did so well. Next Sunday, our best play will be Home of the Brave by Arthur Lawrence. It's an unusual drama about a soldier who has made to live again the most exciting and most terrifying moments of his life. This is Chapman saying goodbye until next Sunday. Philadelphia story was adapted for radio by Robert Tallman. Joseph Curtin was featured as Dexter Haven, Carl Weber as George, William Quinn as Sandy, and Denise Alexander as Dinah. Edwin Jerome played Seth, and Jean Leonard was Thomas. Recreating her original Broadway role as Margaret was Vera Allen.
cordially invited to join us again next week when Best Plays presents Home of the Brave. Best Plays is an NBC production supervised by William Welch and directed by Edward King. This is Fred Collins speaking. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.